Hello, everybody, and welcome to the continuation of Ray's and Initiations webinar commentary. We're on number 61, and we've reached page 550. We were talking about the uh, planetary logos and his creation of uh, major vortices of force or major points of tension within his body of manifestation, and that the spiritual hierarchy uh, of our planet is such a vortex, and humanity itself is another. So we need to uh, learn how to work in uh, relation to these larger holes uh, that the planetary logos has uh, created for his own, you know, good purposes. Let's see if there's anything else here that maybe requires a little attention as a review. Yes, uh, we talked about Master Moria and his uh, use of the word Im imperil. Um, that's, that's pronounced like a verb, but here we use it as a noun. And he calls a uh, certain uh, use of irritation and anger as habits of residence which imperil the resident. Um, it is when the aspirant recognizes that he himself is composed of energy units held uh, such, such as the various fields, the various elementals uh, held in coherent expression by a still stronger energy, that of uh, Integration, uh, which proceeds, uh, whoops, that's not the one we want, uh, which proceeds in the case of the intelligent aspirant, uh, proceeding in the case of the, <clears throat> of the intelligent aspirant, then uh, he begins consciously to work in a world of forces uh, similarly composed, and he can then begin to use the energy of a certain kind and selectively, and not just be the victim of it. Uh, let's just say <clears throat> he is no longer the victim of his own uh, thoughtless, uh, unmanaged reactions. Okay. <clears throat> unmanaged. This world of energy in which he lives and moves and has his being is the living organized vehicle of manifestation of the planetary logos. And so we often use those words, the one in whom we live and move and have our being, but do we really realize the meaning uh, of that great wholeness uh, in the sea of energies? of which, of whom, we live. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to number 61. As I've said, you know, the last word is certainly not being spoken. <coughs> this, these are just hints, associations, things you may want to entertain. Hopefully, they will produce a flashing forth of light uh, and bring a revelation of something that was not there before. Whenever light flashes forth, the possibility of revelation exists, and uh, initiation really is a continuous revelation up to a certain point of revelation. And then we begin to work on a new type of of revelation, always the truth uh, is a voice like this. In that light, we shall see light. And uh, let's say, um, thinking of initiation here, um, thinking of initiation in the achieved light, we shall see still greater light <clears throat> and more relationships will come uh, into, will come to be recognized uh, by consciousness. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I'll just use this. Oh, how about RZD? That'd be a good one, wouldn't it? <clears throat> we have to get abbreviations which are not as long as the word themselves. <laughs> Recognized. Okay. Now, we go on. <clears throat> and I'll just make sure that we have a red bracket in case we have something we want to write down, something we want to say. Certain great readjustments are going on in that center. What is the center we're talking about? Our own center, uh, humanity, the throat center of the planetary logos. Sometimes, maybe it depends on what aspect of humanity the Tibetan is discussing, he uh, speaks of the Ajna center, which is a higher center as being um, the center which humanity represents. Certain great readjustments are going on in that center, for it is um, beginning to conform at long last to divine intention. And so, I, what do I call this process? You know, I've, I've emphasized it somewhat. I call this um, <clears throat> uh, congruency with the archetype. And the archetypes are found on the truly esoteric planes of the cosmic physical plane, namely the monadic and logoic level. I have elsewhere pointed out that for the first time in a long history of human development, energy from Shambhala has made a direct impact upon this third planetary center. We want to say that uh, there have been uh, Shambhala impacts, but maybe not directed so uh, forcefully into humanity. Uh, there was, uh, I think, a Shambhala impact in Lemurian times, uh, which brought that continent to an end with uh, volcanic uh, displays and eruptions and a Shambhala impact, which brought about the great floods, which ended the Atlantean civilization. And Shambhala may have been involved as well in some important way in the individualization of man, because uh, even longer ago, in middle Lemurian times, 18, well, maybe 21 million years ago, because it was the um, monads who descended uh, or sent an aspect of themselves into the higher mental plane uh, and with the help of the solar angels helped to uh, create the egoic body. And recently we've had more, uh, the 1825 impact, the 1975 impact, the 2000, <clears throat> the year 2000 impact. And if you really want to get the lowdown on all this in a very uh, revelatory and scholarly manner, you go to Philip Lindsay's uh, books, and especially here, The Hidden History of Humanity, HHH. He really uh, goes in an exacting manner through the Shambhala impacts. And I think he even also has articles on these. Okay, <clears throat> so it's uh, it's been a long history of human development and uh, energy from Shambhala has made um, a direct impact upon the third planetary center. And he says the first time. So maybe we're talking about those impacts which um, began in 1825 uh probably uh uh pr probably uh dk is discussing the impacts uh okay discussing the impacts of 1825 when also there was a very strong uh, second ray climax uh 18 uh, the year 1975, and that's 125 years later, <clears throat> and notice the 2575s and all that has something to do with uh, the centennial years, uh, which are um, which bring hierarchy into conclave, conclave, and 2000. So we seem to be progressing by <clears throat> uh, 25 year uh, increments, uh, increments of 25 years are involved here. 
and some say that uh, the year um, <clears throat> the year 25 has very much to do, or 25 years as a cycle, uh, 20, 250, 2,500, has very much to do with the fourth ray, and which is, at this time anyway, the major ray from the soul perspective of humanity. We're not given the dates of the kinds of uh, impacts that occurred in Lemuria and also in Atlantis. <clears throat> and there were, as Blavatsky elaborates, a number of floods, and we tend to conflate them and think of them as only one, but uh, there were destructions that occurred millions of years ago and those that occurred uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago and those that occurred ten uh, of tens of thousands of years ago, and it's easy to confuse them. So anyway, um, their impacts upon the throat center. Now, uh, you kind of think about, um, think about humanity as the throat center. So, whoop. Oh, that's not going to be good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see that it's possible to create a document with with some anomalies in it, you know? So, um, <clears throat> here we go. I think about um, humanity as the uh, throat center of the planetary logos. We know that the throat center is involved in a, uh, in the general uh, process of the first initiation. And recently, uh, in a larger sense, uh, maybe a cosmic sense, our planetary logos has undergone a first, first initiation. Um, <clears throat> and this is a fourth initiation, so not yet, but that's coming too. A first initiation in a series of seven initiations. So perhaps the throat center stimulation of humanity that is in process uh, has a lot to do, but, uh, perhaps the throat center stimulation of the planetary logos through uh, the stimulation of the vortex called uh, humanity um, has much to do with the um, process which occurs at uh, and uh, succeeds. I'm sorry, so many abbreviations and succeeds the first initiation. We know that uh, the, the sacral center is stimulated in humanity in that way and rises to the throat center. Okay. Uh, let's see where we are here. I just have to get my little clock rolling again and then all will be well. Right. So, um, the, uh, after the first initiation, uh, after the first initiation, we uh, move, we human beings, towards um, uh, uh, mental illumination and um, spiritual mentality. Let's just see. I think I can find that. I'm always uh, kind of losing that reference, but I'll, I'll get it in a second. It is um, the place where DK talks about um, spiritual instinct. So, spiritual instinct, and uh, let's see if we have that. Or one, two, three, four. Aha, uh -huh. that, that was the one right before. That was it. Okay, so spiritual instinct. Uh huh, I've done all seven. Now, I think uh, this is an easier one to find, and I think I will find it. 
It's called intuitive instinct, and I don't think there's so many references. Intuitive instinct. There's only one. Right. So, this is the place where we need to be. Uh -huh. Second initiation, um, mental uh, illumined mind, and spiritual intelligence. Well, we can see how the throat center would be involved in that. Let's call this uh, towards the illumined mind and spiritual intelligence. Then later we have a spiritual instinct and uh, let's see, what, it, what does he call it? Uh, intuitive instinct and spiritual perception. So that's the perception that the higher mind allows you to have. The, the master still does use the higher mind. It's not as if it all falls apart. He's able to use the abstract mind as an, abstract, uh, as an aspect of the triad, at least to convey what he understands um, to those who do not have the intuition fully developed, or maybe sufficiently developed, I had ought to say. Anyway, for the first time in the long history of human development, at least on this planet, we have a uh, 21 million years, and if we include the moon chain, we have billions of years, and if we include the previous solar system, then uh, we're into the trillions when human beings existed in that uh, previous uh, manifestation of the solar logos when he was, uh, what can we say, selfishly, in a cosmic sense, integrating his personality at least from the cosmic perspective. For us, it would be highly spiritual. So uh, this impact upon humanity, um, let's see where we are here. Mm, this impact upon humanity is not due entirely to the point of in evolution attained by mankind. This attainment is only a secondary reason or cause. It is due to the will of Sanat Kumara himself as he prepares for a certain cosmic initiation. Well, um, what initiation would that be? Um, let's just say uh, this initiation for Sanat Kumara could very well be the second uh, cosmic initiation. Uh, Sanakumara uh, is presently uh, passing through a type of fourth initiation uh, which uses the um, the planetary chains PLCS uh, I think that's what we'll do there PLCS CS uh-huh we can't have a capital P, PLCS, <clears throat> planetary chains, and particularly the fourth planetary chain uh, for a type of initiation which is different from cosmic. I think uh, they are lesser initiations, but they are very important, and the reason that the Earth chain is suffering uh, so uh, focally is because of this particular initiation, but a cosmic initiation is being prepared, and when will that take place? Uh, well, in terms of the period of preparation of Sanakumara, we just don't know. I mean, it can be just uh, millions of years, but it could still seem to be imminent, even if it's only if it is millions of years. The second the cosmic, the cosmic initiation might coincide. Uh, I have speculated, with the fifth uh, chain initiation. Okay, so this initiation requires the reorganization of the energies flowing through and composing that center, which we call the race of men. Well, um, we also have learned uh, that while there is a transference of energy from the sacral uh, to the throat, at the first time of the first initiation, and a transfer of energy from the solar plexus to the heart at the second initiation, the second initiation requires 
that um, illumined mind and spiritual intelligence. And so um, I have come to think, mm, I'll say here, mm, so I, uh, so I have come to think that the uh, second uh, cosmic initiation is cosmically uh -huh, imminent uh, for Sanat Kumara and, and may occur more or less at the same time when uh, he is taking a fifth uh, chain initiation. Right now, he's taking a fourth chain initiation, or perhaps, or perhaps, um, and I'm not sure about this, or perhaps a fifth round initiation on this, the fourth chain. So, this uh, initiation requires the reorganization of those energies flowing through and composing that center which we call the race of men. Remember, this is the throat center, a throat center, and naturally involved with uh, the illumination of the mind and spiritual intelligence. So that's my reasoning there. Uh, this, uh, so uh, humanity will be mightily changed because of Sanat Kumara's development. So let's just say that, that humanity, whoop, no, that won't work, that uh, humanity, the throat center, will be significantly um, changed uh, because of Sanat Kumara's uh, work and preparation, work uh, towards the second cosmic initiation. So the center which we call the race of men, uh, just the way for a human being as they approach the uh, second uh, initiation and even uh, in terms of expression, following that initiation, the throat center will take on a new um, type of vitality and will be used uh, in the demonstration of the illumined mind and spiritual intelligence, which of course increases in potency as we reach the third initiation, but then the intuition really begins to play in and the higher psychism as well. So this uh, creates a rearrangement in the center itself of what type we cannot say at this time and thus brings into manifested expression certain aspects and qualities. Let's see, let's just say that not all aspects um, and qualities of <clears throat> a center demonstrate at once. Just uh, as planets are centers, we realize that not all aspects uh, latent in a uh, planetary uh, expression demonstrate at uh, at the same time. So, certain aspects and qualities uh, come into expression which were not being expressed before. So we can we can ex expect. Um, Thus, an improvement of humanity, the throat center of Sanat Kumara. Uh, certain aspects and qualities always inherent in those energies uh, which have not hitherto been recognized. So, the elevation of humanity is coming, obviously. Uh, the elevation of, of uh, humanity is coming with the second uh, cosmic initiation of Sanat Kumara. And uh, coinciding, uh, I have theorized, uh, with a fifth uh, round or chain initiation of a lesser kind. And for more information on this, uh, for more uh, information, go to TCF, um, sorry. Um, TCF, page uh, 384. <clears throat>
Go to, go to. Okay. This creative crisis, interesting because the third ray is the ray of uh, creative intelligence, has been made possible by three major happenings. Uh, if the third ray is the ray of uh, creative intelligence, then uh, humanity, the throat center, bringing through the third ray of the planetary logos, uh, will go through uh, a creative crisis. It all stands to reason, uh, we might say. So, um, three major happenings. So, we're talking about uh, a creative crisis uh, in humanity made possible uh, by three major happenings. Well, we know everything is stirring tremendously within the human race, and we can hardly understand why it should be so. Maybe, if, you know, we try to reason about it from the uh, actions and the desires and intentions and acts of man, of, of the human beings, but that's not enough, not by far enough to explain why uh, this is occurring. Imagine that we were able to think of the present uh, geopolitical situation in terms of the initiation of the human race. It's a very different way of thinking than uh, is presently put forward by intelligent human beings who are analyzing the process. Uh, for them, the whole thing is caused by uh, humanity and maybe to a certain extent by some natural phenomena. So what do we call this? Uh, three major happenings which are uh, stirring that uh, second vortex, the vortex uh, which in the life of Sanat Kumara uh, is humanity. The, you know, actually, uh, I think I should say it. Um, when we when we think of chakras, uh, we are likely to regard them as discs and not as vortices, which they are. So a uh, a more accurate uh, description. Uh, excuse me. Description of chakras uh, sees them as whirling vortices. Okay, and actually the, the entire transmission of energy from one level to another pretty well goes through funnels or vortices. Um, some of this has been beautifully depicted uh, by the animated art of Dwayne Carpenter. Um, and I think, I uh, hope I'm correct here, but his Light Weaver uh, uh, website can demonstrate this, or you can contact him uh, directly if you need his um, email. I can certainly give it to you. I'm sure he'd be happy to discuss with you the whole concept of the chakra as the vortex. Okay, so three major happenings. The conclusion of a 25,000 year cycle of movement around what is called the lesser zodiac. Okay, so from Aries to Pisces, well, really, it's from backwards, Pisces to Aries, we have the lesser uh, zodiac. Okay. What? Well, I think a good Z, a Z in time saves nine. Okay. Zodiac. And we go through these approximately uh, 2,500 year periods with overlaps, but uh, really uh, the lesser zodiac with uh, signs or constellations uh, taking uh, a period of approximately 2,500 years or more exactly 
2,160 years. Notice that that's uh, exactly half of the 432, which is a numerical combination found when we describe the uh, the yugas, the four yugas, all built upon the 432, but the 216 is immediately related. So, so this uh, and and this is also called uh, this greater cycle. This um, greater cycle is called the Great Platonic Year, and this connotes a major cycle of experience in the life of our planetary logos, and we're pretty well going to be changing that Platonic Year uh, relatively soon. Uh, DK has told us we cannot know exactly when from the calculations of our particular science, but the hierarchy knows. So uh, this is a major cycle in the experience of our planetary logos. Now we're looking at, you know, why it is um, that this center we call humanity is being plunged into a, a great uh, creative crisis. Three major happenings are encouraging it. Uh, it is related to the interplay between the planetary logos and the solar logos as the latter responds to the energies emanating from the 12 zodiacal constellations. The, uh, the solar logos is also going through its own particular age uh, related to the zodiac uh, just as the planetary logos is. And I suppose the solar logoic cycle, uh, the large solar logoic cycle, okay, I think um, SLC, uh, let's call it this way, SLC, and we use that adjective form, adjectival form, quite a bit. So, solar logoic. Uh, it, it, the, the, the complete cycle, the large, uh, solar logoic cycle, uh, is, uh, much greater than the planetary, uh, logoic, uh, PL, uh, C. Planetary logoic, PLLC. Let's do that way. Okay, and PLLC, <clears throat> and planetary logoic, logoic cycle. Okay, so maybe one. Just uh, we might we might sometimes think that the perhaps this all has to be checked out. But perhaps the solar logos um, goes through. Uh, one sign of the zodiac uh, or constellation in the time it takes for um, our planetary logos to experience a great platonic year. And uh, GPY, um, great platonic year. Well, and, and other planets will have their version of the Great Platonic Year, and I do believe uh, it will be different and distinct from our own. Uh, but let's just say again, the number 25 is involved, and our solar logos is a logos of the fourth order, and there is a special relationship between the four, the cross and the circle of our planet, and the fourth uh, order of the solar logos. So there's a, a definite uh, connection here. Um, our uh, planet, uh, planetary scheme, represents the base of the spine center, correlated at this time with the number four uh, for the solar logos. And remember, I'm saying that that number 25 is correlated with uh, the fourth ray and uh, fourth ray cycles, and a lot of this uh, kind of thought is uh, discovered or generated by the uh, astrologer and rheologist Stephen Pugh. He's done a good job uh, deciphering uh, 
what the Tibetan hinted at uh, with regard to these cycles. Okay, so that's the very first thing that's happening. We're experiencing the end of a great platonic year in Pisces and the beginning of another great platonic year in Aquarius. Now, uh, that's two kinds of uh, two kinds of Pisces ages and two kinds of Aquarius ages. So, this uh, the end of a great uh, Platonic year is imminent, though non-discoverable by our human science at this time, and also uh, and the beginning of a great platonic year ruled by the uh, lord of the constellation uh, Aquarius. Okay, so, but, and, and also, you know, coinciding with this is the end of a 2500 or 2160 year Piscean era, which the Tibetan informs us in one of his... Um, Writings to his student, uh, Roberto Sagioli, uh, will occur in 2117, interestingly, the same time as we have the next uh, visible Venus transit over the sun, just the way we had uh, in 2004 and also 2012. So now we have the end of the Piscean age, and this simply means, that's number two, Second thing that's happening to stir humanity so, this simply means that the energies coming from Pisces during the last 2,000 years, and that's a rounded off figure. Uh, goodness, I have to get my bracket, don't I? What shall a man do without brackets? Okay. <laughs> what shall a commentator do without brackets? Uh, so, this 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 is a rounded off figure, a rounded off uh, off figure, uh, usually discussed as 2,500 years with overlaps, or more exactly 2,160 years. But even that figure may be an approximation. The actual um, astronomical figures so closely related to the mysteries of initiation are not conferred upon us at this stage unless we are the appropriate kind of initiate. Otherwise, we would find ourselves with uh, the ability to wield uh, too much power. Okay, uh, so... so um, the energies of Aquarius also a, 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 a also um, a a two thousand or twenty five hundred or twenty one hundred and sixty year period. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, it's inevitable that in this book and certainly in Cosmic Fire and in uh, Esoteric astrology, we're going to get into these cycles. And some, you know, of the astrologers have made a profound study of the cycles, but none of us is the kind of uh, initiate needed to have all knowledge of these things. You pretty well have to be a master of the wisdom to access that third subplane of the atmic plane. Uh, these result in major changes in the life of the planetary logos and potently affect his body of manifestation through the medium of his three major centers, Shambhala, Hierarchy, and Humanity. So, uh, let's just say during every, we'll call them precessional uh, ages, during every precessional age, uh, a planetary logos uh, undergoes great changes in his uh, major chakras, and hence minor chakras, namely uh, head center, heart center, and throat center, or Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. So, you know, we probably will not be in a position to recognize what civilization 
will be like. Uh, we have our projections based largely on external fifth-ray considerations, but the uh, imminent spiritual possibilities are not yet considered by the popular uh, mind, even the intelligent popular mind. So all of these projections into the future are leaving out a very important dimension, namely the dimension of uh, internal spiritual development and internal spiritual access to uh, a new wave of cyclic, uh, cyclically appearing energies, which are different from the ones we have been experiencing during the Piscean Age when man seemed to reawaken to his uh, innate intelligence. And uh, especially when the, well, let's just say maybe the in the overlap period when Francis Bacon was born with so much Aquarius in his chart, we had the beginning of the scientific uh, fifth ray Aquarian age. Um, and that was, you know, 500 years ago. That's a rounded off figure. The increasingly dominant, so what's the third type of um, impact, we might say, uh, the third type of happening, uh, which is create, uh, producing the creative crisis? Okay, that's what we're in right now. <laughs> we are in a creative crisis. And uh, it has a great opportunity, could we but realize it, if we could but realize it. Okay, some of us maybe do realize it from time to time. The increasingly dominant activity of the seventh ray of order or of ceremonial magic, as it is somewhat erroneously <laughs> called. DK understands so deeply the quality of these rays that when there is a human approximation uh, to uh, in language that attempts to describe their quality, he's never quite satisfied because he knows that the descriptors uh, do not capture the true uh, essence or expression of the ray. He, you know, when, he, when he, you have a term like isolated unity, he doesn't think it's uh, very good. Maybe a cumbersome, uh, cumbersome phrase. Uh, even the word identification is not considered uh, necessarily an excellent word. Uh, his thought is so perceptive regarding the quality of the energies appearing that he needs something more, um, something better than what English or any ordinary language can provide to describe these energy qualities. So um, the ray uh, of order or of ceremonial magic, as it's somewhat erroneously called, uh, but let's just say, but not, <laughs> sorry, entirely erroneously. Okay. So that's coming in uh, ever uh, since uh, 1675. This uh, ray has been growing in power. And even when Francis Bacon appeared in the late uh, 16th, century and early 17th, I think he died in, well, they say he died anyway, in 1616, um, this uh, seventh ray was anticipated through his presence. He is now the Maha Chohan, as we know, or as we've been told. We wouldn't know it if we hadn't been told, would we? I don't think so. Uh, we would not know the status of a sixth degree initiate, we would not have that as part of our living experience. Uh, this ray is now coming into manifestation. As I say, it, it's been uh, 400, uh, 300 and, uh, well, pretty soon 350 years. This ray is now coming into manifestation and is in close cooperation with the above two factors, that may be a hint, uh, with the um, lesser uh, uh, processional uh, age of Aquarius now uh, entering and maybe with the greater um, great platonic year ruled by Aquarius. That's a speculation. Um, I don't know that we have the race cycles are uh, independent of the 
of the zodiacal cycles. So it's, it's not that, let's say, that every time Aquarius appears as a processional age, we will necessarily have the seventh ray accompanying it. No, and, and previously, it was the sixth ray, very related to Pisces, um, accompanying the Piscean processional age. That doesn't always happen. Uh, other rays could accompany these processional ages. And who knows about the long-term accompaniment of a ray during a great platonic year, uh, during a 25,000-year cycle. I don't know if DK has mentioned that. Has he hinted at it? Is this a hint about it? That would be most interesting that, let us say, accompanying the 25,000 years um, of the next great platonic age ruled by Aquarius, the seventh ray would be present throughout the 25,000 years. But it could be, of course, another ray, and we don't necessarily understand uh, those, those cycles. Hence, uh, let us uh, hasten towards the third subplane of the atomic plane, where what we call, anyway, all knowledge, probably in a planetary sense and regarding more the cosmic physical plane than anything else can be found or maybe it's all knowledge concerning the brahmic levels of the cosmic physical plane that is the five uh, lower planes or five lower cosmic physical subplanes atma buddhi manas uh, astral etheric physical okay so so stirring up humanity into a rate of crisis is this um, Increasingly dominant activity of the seventh ray of order. A lot of souls who resonate particularly to that violet ray will be coming in. And, uh, and, and sometimes monadic factors are involved here too. Very interesting. He talks about uh, the different types of monads and how they will get along with the seventh ray. And only the sixth ray monads won't really get along very well. But other types of monads will have uh, means of cooperation. Uh, it produces also the lessening of the power of the sixth ray of idealism. Uh, but um, remember uh, an obscure point <laughs> uh, that still another twenty one thousand years of the of of a sixth ray cycle are scheduled to run as part of a uh, an approximately uh, 40,000 year plus mm, 40,000 year plus cycle of the fourth ray. <laughs> so uh, obviously, if we want to know the science of cycles, <laughs> there's a lot to know. And probably most of what we get is that which is related to the experiences of the human family. I'm not even sure we really understand in an individual sense what the ray cycles are in our own individual lives um, as distinct from the astrological cycles, which are much more objective and easy to understand. But anyway, we're talking about the normal sixth ray cycle, which has been operating during the processional age of Pisces. This has had a long cycle and has greatly hastened the evolutionary process. And I just want to say, before uh, criticizing, uh, criticizing oh, the sixth ray, uh, as we so often do, let us uh, think of what Master Decay is here saying. How much um, evolutionary progress has been made under the sixth ray, and maybe we're very fortunate that in a still higher cycle, it has another approximately 21,000 years to run. Okay, so it demonstrates its effective work in the emergence today of the great world ideologies. Uh, now, this will, um, when one adheres to an ideology, then one is um, uh, lifting his consciousness above uh, purely <clears throat> uh, 
personal and individual concern and many sacrifices uh, which uh, advance the individual and group will be made. Uh, made for the ideal which expresses an idea. So if we can get off the center of our own stage of consciousness, um, we can progress and uh, the ray of abstract idealism lifts us above often this purely personal concern which keeps us involved in a material focus which is uh, rather rotary and repetitive and non-progressive. I am necessarily considering these energies only in relation to the human consciousness. Remember, this was uh, all this. Um, all this was about the creative crisis through which uh, humanity is passing now. And we, you know, a larger point of view. Yes, a larger point of view. That's what DK can always be counted on to present us with. A larger point of view, if you if you read through THROU, if you read through Treatise on Cosmic Fire and you still have your normal point of view, you really haven't uh, read, <laughs> read with care. And we know how Master DK is always advising us to read uh, much more carefully his books than we tend to do. We cannot imagine that these books are written by simply a normal human being with normal uh, human knowledge uh, characteristic of the type of development through which we are passing at this stage of civilization. You know, all masters are fifth rounders, as they say, and the Chohans are sixth rounders, and the Chohans of the seventh degree are seventh rounders, and they have the kind of intelligence, even though we're in the fourth round of our fourth chain on this fourth globe, uh, they have the kind of intelligence which anticipates uh, the intelligence and consciousness of future rounds or cycles. In a way, they're very far ahead, but now the opportunity is offered uh, to all of us uh, to join them uh, in their uh, excellence and in their uh, self-forced, self-initiated progress. There are other factors present on our planet today, but these are the ones which will, in a vague sense, uh, mean something to you as you think and seek to understand. Uh, let's just say that Master DK must, of course, uh, speak uh, proportionately to our consciousness um, if we are to gather anything. Uh, he cannot reveal all. <laughs> uh, it would be, and, and what Master Moria says, uh, to reveal all is to put on chains. Well, I think, uh, I think here that we have reached a point. We can take this up next time. So this is the, uh, end of Rays and Initiations webinar commentary number 61. And the day is still 7 February 17th. And the page numbers, uh, are, um, <laughs> page, goodness, that didn't get very far. Uh, 550 to 551. 50, 551. And we will be beginning uh, of Rays and Initiation Webinar Commentaries, number 62, uh, pages 551, to some other page. Hopefully, we'll make at least one page. And I'm not sure what day we'll do this. Maybe. Later tonight, I'm not sure. One tries to forge ahead and uh, fight uh, fatigue and other circumstances uh, so as to get this uh, project at least in some kind of initial form, which will be useful to the deeper students of Master DK. Obviously, when we're speaking of the rays and the initiations, well, we have to be uh, deeper students of the great teacher because uh, that's just the way the material is. Uh, the, some of the earlier books 
take us through earlier phases of understanding. But none of them is superficial. And if you read the very first book, Initiation, Human and Solar, well, there's just information in there that's not going to be found anywhere else because Master DK tends usually not to repeat himself and sends us on a hunt through the book so that we can correlate this information. And fortunately, we are uh, in possession of the Alice A. Bailey CD-ROM. It's one of the great things which the Lucis Trust uh, invested in and made available and facilitated the research of many like myself and many who really want to get deeply into the teaching and hopefully facilitated uh, your research as well. So that's going to be it for right now. Thank you for attending number 61. Hopefully, uh, as we think about these things, our consciousness uh, is uh, deepened. Hopefully, it is deepened. And now, signing off. Till the next time, take care. Bye-bye.